Good evening, everyone. This is Scott with Dearly Departed. Now, the vlog I put together for today is about Vincent Bugliosi, who was the prosecutor on the Manson trial. Uh, he was one of my heroes for decades. Uh, as you'll hear throughout the video, actually, as you'll hear throughout the video, uh, you're going to hear a lot of wind noise. And I'm so sorry about that. I have been doing this, you know, granted, not for very long, but I've tried different cameras. I've tried different microphones, several different microphones, several different methods, and I can't perfect it. So you're going to hear wind noise. I apologize. I thought I had uh, positioned the microphone properly and so it wouldn't get any wind anyway, but Forest Lawn's windy anyway. So that's what you're going to hear today. But Bugliosi was one of my heroes. He wrote the book Helter Skelter co-wrote it with Kurt Gentry. He prosecuted the, the Manson trial. And he also produced the first and second Helter Skelter movies, which I loved. And uh, he's caught a lot of flack in recent years because of the method of his prosecution and uh, the uh, war, the race war being questionable and uh, his methods of prosecution being questionable. However, the outcome is uh, how it should have come out, where they were sentenced. But uh, the method was, you know, I say it's kind of questionable. But uh, if it wasn't for the book, if it wasn't for those movies, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. You know, it was a fascination for me. It's much like Kenneth Anger's Hollywood Babylon. It's, it's nonsense, and uh, it's a great picture book. Helter Skelter isn't nonsense. It's a historic document of the trial. So I hope you like this little tour, my little tribute to Vincent Bugliosi. I was a big fan. He was always really nice to me. And, uh, and well, the few times I met him. And, I don't know, rest in peace. So this is the Gundale home where Mr. and Mrs. Bugliosi lived for 20 years. They sold it in 1998 for $700,000. It's a 3,400 square foot house. It was built in 1939. But this is where the Bugliosis were living during the trial when he was prosecuting the Manson case. And they had undercover police officers uh, outside and, and supposedly a, a hotline to the police department from here in case their phone lines were cut during the trial because there was a lot of scrutiny, a lot of uh, death threats, no doubt. Uh, and this is where they lived until they sold it in 1998 and moved to Pasadena. Well, I tried waiting in the car for a really long time, but uh, these guys with the leaf blowers and the lawnmowers and the weed whippers aren't going anywhere. So, uh, sorry about the noise, but I want to do this before it gets too late. So this cute little Queen Anne style home is the last home of Vincent Bugliosi. Uh, Bugliosi lived here, he bought the house with his wife Gail, probably 1998, and moved here from Glendale. And this is where he was living when he died. Cute little house. So you can see he would have down, he would have wanted the downsize from the one in Glendale. Now in 1999, my brother actually wrote uh, Mr. Bugliosi here and uh, sent him a first edition of Helter Skelter and asked for Mr. Bugliosi to put his uh, favorite quote in it. And what he wrote was, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Michaels, regarding a favorite quote of mine, I've not stopped to think about it before, but no one favorite quote comes to mind. There have been a considerable number of quotes thought throughout the years that I've liked. Here are a few of them that immediately come to mind. Voltaire's common sense isn't very common. Truth is often an elusive fugitive, but I believe if one vigorously pursues it long enough, it can be found. If 50 million people say a foolish thing, it's still a foolish thing. So um, I actually found a poster of Mr. Bugliosi when he was running for district attorney. And I sent it to this address, rolled up in a, uh, in, a, in a tube, and asked for his autograph on it. And he kept it for quite a long time. And then he died, and I thought I'd never see it again. Then, a couple of months after he died, that package arrived, the tube arrived, signed by Mr. Bugliosi. The poster was signed. So uh, he must have signed it and left it here. Maybe someone else found it and decided to uh, 
to finish up his work and stick it in the mail. I don't know what it was, but it showed up after he died. And it's pretty cool he got that signed by him. So this is the last home of Mr. Bugliosi, the last home while he was alive. He lived here when he died. This is Kaiser Permanente Hospital, 4867 Sunset Boulevard in Hollywood. And this is the last breath location of Vincent Bugliosi, according to his death certificate. Vincent Bugliosi died on June 6, 2015 at 9.20 p.m. at Kaiser. Heart issues, pneumonia, rectal cancer, adult respiratory distress syndrome. So we're in Glendale, at Forest Lawn Glendale, behind the Freedom Mausoleum. We're heading down to the last home of Mr. Bugliosi. Now, Bugliosi caught a lot of shit in recent years because of the helter-skelter theory the war between the blacks and the whites and what's fact what's fiction but the book helter skelter is as my friend michael pointed out the truth of the trial it's exactly what happened at the trial during the trial what they used to prosecute what they used to find manson and the others guilty so it's an excellent resource that's what I read it a couple of times when I was still living in Detroit. But I'm just saying, we've earned, learned a lot since then. And I wonder about a lot of things. <laughs> There's got to be some significance to this. Vincent Gugliosi with two tennis balls. I don't even... So, whoever left these things here, forgive me. I'll put them back when I'm done. Don't understand the significance. But here's uh, Mr. Gugliosi. And this is my copy of the book, Helter Skelter, that um, I had him he autographed for me, I think, when I met him one of the times. Uh, yeah. In fact, uh, the second time I met him is when uh, his wife recognized me from the girls next door because uh, Mr. Bugliosi's wife used to play bridge at the Playboy Mansion and so she knew Hefner and the girls and, and Mrs. Bugliosi came up to me and said, oh yeah, I know you from that show. So uh, August 18th, 1934, interesting to note, Mr. Bugliosi's birthday is the same as Roman Polanski's birthday died June 6, 2015. In the eyes of the world, the great majority of men are neither indispensable nor irreplaceable. A small minority are irreplaceable, but not indispensable. Our much-loved husband and father was both, forever enshrining him in the rarefied pantheon of greats. Let my work speak for me. So, uh, thank you, Mr. Bugliosi, for the, for the account of the trial. And for your book and ultimate movie, Helter Skelter, because if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be here today. Here's an original newspaper ad from 1974 that was saved by my friend Jane Osborne's mother, Janet Brandis. Uh, she clipped it from a newspaper and when 
Janet, rest in peace, passed away, uh, Jane gave this to me. So uh, this is the original uh, ad from the newspaper in 1974. Not since in cold blood has there been a true crime story of this power and fascination. And here we are over 50 years after the murders happened and we're still talking about it. Thank you everybody for watching. Thank you for subscribing. The uh, Patreon link is below if you wish to sponsor my work. There's a whole bunch of you guys that have uh, that have done that, and it's uh, and I'm very grateful. So thank you so much for your time and for your attention, and I hope you enjoy these things. Take care.